Hi everyone, my name is Veronica Campanella. I'm excited to share with you the results of a research study that our team at ENSC DC has been conducting. Our study is titled Caregiver Perspectives on Alternative EMS Disposition Systems for Children. A little background information. It is estimated that almost half of pediatric EMS calls are for low acuity problems that may not require an ambulance transport to the emergency department. The exact percentage depends on how low acuity is defined and the population in question. Overuse of the EMS system is both inefficient and unsafe. There has been considerable recent interest in how alternative disposition systems could help address this problem. One important example being the ET3, which means Emergency Triage, Treat, and Transport grants. Some of the alternatives that have been developed include transportation to clinics, dispatching ride-sharing services like Uber or Lyft, and leaving patients at the scene. The COVID-19 pandemic has heightened this interest, with EMS agencies and patients alike both keen to avoid unnecessary EMS transports. The picture seen on the poster in the middle bottom is a summary of the options currently being trialed in Washington, D.C. Thus far, children have been excluded from this and many other of these similar pilot programs. One of the cited reasons that this may be is that parents and caregivers would be opposed to these alternatives. There is, however, very little research that supports that claim. So our objective was to explore how caregivers perceive the risks and benefits of including children in these alternative EMS disposition programs. For our methods, we conducted six virtual focus groups from January through June of 2021 with participants in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. All participants were caregivers with a child younger than 18 years of age. One of the focus groups was completed in Spanish. We used purposive sampling to ensure our participants were reflective of the demographic diversity of this region. A PhD trained facilitator moderated all groups using a semi-structured moderator guide. The identified transcripts were hand-coded and cluster of similar codes were grouped into themes. Now turning to our results, we recruited 38 caregivers who were diverse with respect to race and ethnicity, with 39% being white, 29% black, 29% Hispanic, and 3% Asian, as well as diverse with insurance status, with 42% enrolled in Medicaid, the remainder, 58%, had private insurance. Some of the key themes and sub-themes identified in our analysis are outlined on a poster in the middle top. Participants agreed that caregivers often use 911 for low acuity complaints for a variety of reasons. The most commonly identified sub-themes were lack of transportation, either to the primary doctor or to the ED, two, lack of education in what constitutes a true emergency, and three, lack of knowledge about resources available in primary care. Most participants had limited pre-existing knowledge of alternative EMS disposition systems. After a brief explanation, participants agreed that including children in these systems could present specific benefits and harms. The sub-themes for benefits included, one, triage nurse lines could help educate caregivers on what constitutes a true emergency or required ambulance transports to the ED. Two, minimizing unnecessary wait times and three, cost savings to individuals and the healthcare system. There were five sub-themes for potential harms. These included, one, individuals making triage decisions may lack pediatric training. Two, there may be a need for secondary transport. Three, delay in receiving definitive care. Four, unsafe transport and commercial ride sh sharing services. This includes lack of child restraints. And five, worsening health inequities. Finally, there was a uniform and strongly expressed belief that caregivers should have the final decision-making authority as to whether a patient was taken by ambulance to the emergency department or diverted to an alternative disposition. So in conclusion, we found caregivers in our study identified multiple concerns about pediatric patient safety in alternative EMS disposition systems and expressed a desire to have final decision-making authority regarding patient disposition. These caregiver perspectives should be considered when developing alternative EMS disposition programs for children. This will help ensure that alternatives are patient-centered and acceptable to the population being served. Further research is needed to develop evidence-based, patient-centered pediatric non-transport tools for EMS. Thank you, everyone.